Hey, Browns fans, it's time to gear up for a pain-free 2022 NFL season for your Cleveland Browns with new friends of the show, Buckeye Law Group. If you've been injured in a car accident, a slip and fall, a work accident, or even if you've been buried into the ground by Miles Garrett or stiff-armed by Nick Chubb, you need to call Buckeye Law Group today at 1-800-411-PAIN. Their attorneys will fight for the money you deserve. Buckeye Law Group's attorneys have recovered over $1 billion for their clients throughout the entire country. So don't make the mistake of calling just any other attorney. Call attorneys you can trust. And best of all, they're Browns fans just like you. Call our friends from Buckeye Law Group at 1-800-411-PAIN. After 911, call 411. That's 1-800-411-PAIN. 1-800-411-7246. That's Buckeye Law Group located at 1300 East 9th Street, Suite 1210 in Cleveland, Ohio. Buckeye Law Group, proud fans of the Cleveland Browns just like you. What's going on, Browns fans? This is Vontae, and you are now tuned in to the best Browns podcast in the world. With all the craziness going on this season, I'm still looking forward to a good one. I said you. Let's go, dogs. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Dogs. If you want to get your intro on the show, head to thedogspodcast.com, tap leave voicemail on the drop-down menu. Today we're going to go into get into the final decision uh, for the Sean Watson, what it means for the Browns this season going forward now that it's about the football. Uh, we're also going to discuss our thoughts on the second preseason game. Uh, before we do, though, I have to remind you to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Make sure to tap the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to jointhedogs.com to become an official Dog Pack member on our Patreon page. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, you're going to be late for the Fantasy Leagues, but you can be there to cheer us on. Um, <laughs> there's threads every day in there. Uh, Browns fans all over the world. You get an extra episode uh, every week. It's just a cool place to hang out. You get access to all of us pretty much 24-7, so that's pretty cool if you think we're cool. Um so if, if that's kind of like what you, you're looking for, you want to meet more Browns fans, you can't get enough of the Browns, join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So before we move on, I went up to training camp again on Monday this past week, and I got to meet another fan. I didn't catch his name, but on YouTube, it's God the Highest 216, 216. Super cool dude. He came up to me. I thought he was going to ask me to take a picture of him and his friends. <laughs> and, he, and then he's like, hey, are you Blake from the dogs? And I was like, yeah. And it was just like super cool meeting him. <laughs> That's guys, pretty cool. Like it'll never not be cool meeting you guys. So yes. I never thought in a million years I would ever get recognized outside of Dover, Ohio. <laughs> so uh, if you ever see us out and about, yeah, definitely, come say come, hi. Co- definitely come say hi. It was awesome. It was good to meet you. We appreciate you listening. Um, so... We had big news. It sucks we didn't get to drop an episode for this sooner, but we had crazy schedules last week. Of course, the week we recorded our last episode on a Sunday night at 9 o'clock at night because this week was so busy for all of us, and then the Watson news drops this week. Yeah. Uh, So that's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. But we're going to give you our thoughts today. As you guys know, Deshaun Watson, uh, final suspension has finally been decided. The NFL and the NFLPA came to a settlement, 11 games, and a $5 million fine, a couple other things. Things, I think with uh, it's a good counseling and yep. some stuff like that. Um, but the gist of it's the 11 games, the five million dollar fine. Um, funny thing is, his first game back is the Texans. A lot oh. of people, a lot of people are saying it's a money grab, yeah, for the, the NFL. They're apparently their side of it is 11 games is like the perfect screw you to the Browns because if he if they go 12, then his contract doesn't count for the Browns this year. So they said 11 was the max they could suspend him and kind of give it to the Browns. I don't buy it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't buy it one bit. You no. think they were no. looking at the schedule a little bit? Yeah, no. they went, oh, we could have uh, really, really great ratings, and this could be like kind of like a Super Bowl kind of game. They're going <laughs> to pump rating that game. That, game oh. I w- that game's going to get flexed. Fox is super excited. I already seen Fox put, say, oh, well. <laughs> that is the game that we're covering that week. So yeah. What the one in ten Texans versus the whatever Browns? Hopefully yeah. the six and five Browns. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's kind of funny. That's why, again, when we've been telling you through all this, the NFL is not some moral authority. They're they're in it for the bottom dollar. Yeah. Um, but we've spent the last months talking about. 
the should he, shouldn't he, all that is I'm happy that it's finally done and we can talk about how it affects football. Yes. Because that's why we're here is football. Um so what what does it mean for the Browns this season? What do you think? Are we are we up creek without a paddle? Is the season still alive? Tell the fans what they should expect. I think it's I, I don't know that we have an excuse not to make the playoffs as a wild card. Um Brissett's not that bad. He might not be Super Bowl caliber, but we have a really good roster around him. A uh, fairly complete roster. We might be a little weak at receiver right now. Hopefully we figure something out, but I think we're making the playoffs. I really do. So, go ahead. No, I was just going to nod my head and agree with you on that. I, I think that we're lucky that he's playing this season. I mean, that, I, honestly, like I was pretty much like, well, we're not going to see him play this year. Like, I, I pretty much had my mind made up that he was getting a season. It felt like the writing was all over the wall with that, that he was going to be out for the season. So, for me, I'm like, hey, 11 games, not a complete death sentence. I think that it's a survivable schedule. It does get rough, and then it gets very, it gets super tough towards the back end. And luckily, we'll have him back for those games, some of those games. But, I mean, we have, like, Tampa, Buffalo – He's not going to be in those games. And I like to me, I look at those games. I'm like, <laughs> uh, if he starts to come alive by the time the playoffs start, and we make the playoffs. He's going to be really fresh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're mean, gonna, we'll be a tough out. That year, the Steelers went, they started 10 and 0. I mean, yeah. one of the big reasons they got bounced in the first round is Big Ben was just not fresh. He didn't have an arm anymore. Yeah. Like, I mean, he didn't look terrible at the beginning of the season. He's just getting old. And I mean, Deshaun's not old, so it's really not a problem, but still, he's going to be so fresh. Yeah, I think he'll just need a few games to kind of really get into that midseason form. Hopefully he can get there quick, but I'm a little different than you, Justin. I mm-hmm. didn't really think that the year-long suspension was that probable just because I don't think they wanted to go to court. They knew that this the NFLPA, Deshaun, they were going to sue over this. And I, don't, I think, for me, it's Roger Goodell's kind of like that terrible, cranky old woman at a garage sale who comes up and says, like, you're selling this for 50 cents. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, and she's like, Will you take 30? It's like, <laughs> just give me the extra two dimes, lady. You know? And so he just that's, had to have more games than six. That's a really yeah. funny comparison. I, yeah. So I initially thought it was going to be a full year until like it went and it was supposed to be expedited. And then you started hearing stories like this yeah. dude doesn't want to make a decision. Correct. Yeah. And the reason he didn't want to make a decision is because he knew on the legal side. Sue Robinson was right. Mm-hmm. She explained it perfectly in her report why it was six games. He had really no legal bounds, reasons to change it, to extend it. But he also knew that Puppet Master Goodell was going to be really mad if he didn't extend it. So that's why he told them, you guys need to figure this out because mm-hmm. I have a career. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'm not, I'm not going to deal. I'm not dealing with this. This is your mess. You guys deal with it. Yeah. Um, so then I started to be like, it's not going to be a full season. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I, I wasn't convinced full season. After about a week, I was like, something's up. I was pretty happy when I read that there were, like, settlement talks because oh, yeah. that's when I, you know, I was like, okay, so it's not going to be a season, even if it's – I thought it might be 12 games. Yeah, I, I was very I, for, I was very confused by 11. I, I didn't realize the 12 was the, the cutoff to where he wouldn't – or the salary thing. Mm-hmm. So that does make sense. Yeah. But. Um, I will say this. I think – I think the Browns should expect to be six and five when he comes back, and anything else is a bonus. Anything else, anything better, anything better than six and five is just making it easier for once Deshaun gets back for us to make a playoff push. I mean, you think about this: the Panthers, Jets, Steelers, Falcons. Even with Brissett, the Browns are favored in all those games. Yeah, yeah, I feel like those are winnable. Those are all okay. So then, you mean to tell me? Out of the next um, seven games, the Browns only have to win two. You know, and and I know. So then, your next games are Chargers, Patriots, Ravens, Bengals, Dolphins, Bills, Bucks. Okay, um, Chargers and Ravens and Bills and Bucks tough. Okay, I think the Patriots are not going to be good this year. That's a winnable game. I really, I am really not convinced the Patriots are going to be good this year. I think offensively they're going to take a, a huge step back from an already limited off. They still don't know who's going to call plays. Well, and they they're redoing their entire run scheme on offense, so it's a completely new system. The running backs, the linemen, everybody's learning this new run scheme this preseason. And and, and Mac Jones isn't bad, 
But to me, he reminds me very much of our old quarterback, and which just doesn't scare me. You know what I mean? So I just don't see – I could see Mac Jones take, having a sophomore slump. They have no weapons. No. They have no weapons. No, if we can – not let uh, Ramondre Stevenson put up over 100 on the ground on us like he did last year, we'll yep. be okay. So the Patriots is a winnable game. I know this is going to tick off Bengals fans. That's what Un- we're here for. Until they beat us, I'm not. I'm just not worried about them. They went to the Super Bowl last year. We wiped them up twice. Yeah. We beat them 40-some to what, 7 or 14 or something crazy? Yeah. I, bad. So, yes, I, I completely agree. The Bengals have a great roster, but until – I'm not. I'm not worried about it until you do it. If you come out and spank us week one, then I'll be a little bit more, or not week one, but the first time, then I'll be more nervous. The Bills, I or the uh, Dolphins again. Who knows what toss it's going to be? They, we'll yeah, see. We'll up. see what they are. Could end yep. up being super tough. Could end up not being that bad. That bad of a game. It all depends on Tua. Um, so right there's three out of those seven games. I think are very winnable for the Browns. Now the Bills, obviously tough. The Bucks, tough, and. Honestly, I, th- I picked the Ravens to finish last in the division. So they also don't have any weapons. Well, and this is also going off of our roster's completely healthy, and so is theirs. Yes. I mean, say we have some injuries, things could go a different way. Say Lamar Jackson gets injured in week three, we play Tyler Huntley, maybe he gets hurt. Who knows? We could be playing their third string quarterback. Things like that happen every year that you just don't ever see coming. I, we should be six and five if we stay healthy and Amari Cooper doesn't get hurt. Okay, I like it. If Amari Cooper gets <laughs> right. hurt, I immediately we're, we're in trouble. We I'm very worried about what we can do offensively. Yeah, um, yeah. because we go from I don't think the Browns wide receiver core is that bad because of him. It's top heavy, but if he goes down, we go we're in like that group with the Ravens and the Packers now. Yep. So, what do you guys think is the number? For playoffs, as far as wins, because I'm 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 like at eleven. I think at eleven we're sniffing at it. We're we're in the hunt. Ten got in last year, didn't it? Uh, I don't know. Trying to remember. Yeah, didn't the, didn't sure. the, the Bengals only won ten games, right? Let me do some research. Yeah, we, we were in a that. position. I think you to, might be right, though. You yeah, right I'm pretty that. sure they won the division at ten games. I think we were in a position to win the division towards like, the end of the season. Yeah, and I think well, last year was the year yeah, where everybody th- every, everything was so tight. Yeah. The whole AFC. We had to much. win out like our three games I think and Baker threw for like four picks that one game. Well, <laughs> that one against Merry the, Christmas. Uh, yeah. And I know everybody's like, man, the AFC is super brutal and tough. They're going to they're going to beat up on each other internally in the division. Like Correct. the the AFC West. Ooh. I I mean, I think all those teams it could be week to week just oh, hey, you know, the Chiefs are up, you know, a game. Oh, hey, you know, so Chargers are back in it again. You know, I think all those teams are very good and might just kind of start beating the crap out of each other. And at the end, you know, somebody's going to win that division and get in, but that makes the wild card a little interesting, I think. Yeah, I would pick us to lose to the Chargers, probably the Ravens in Baltimore, the Bucks. I'm not worried about the Bengals. I've been to a primetime game in Cleveland for the last four seasons, and we always just put on a show. Yeah, uh, Bengals won the division last year, ten and seven. So I, I'm just gonna say it's. We always think it's gonna take more than typically. It's like ten. Yeah, if you can get to that ten wins, I mean, sometimes it doesn't get you in. You know, it was a uh, Derek and oh seven. We didn't get in That's at true. ten and six, and then the Giants won the Super Bowl ten and six. Beat your beat your division rivals and go. Yeah, ten and ten and seven, eleven and six, and. I think we'll be fine. Uh, yeah, and, and like you said, Blake, anything better than six and five would be great. Because I mean, Deshaun Watson's going to lose a couple games. It's yeah, just going to happen. I mean, the the red that stretch when he comes back, I mean, the Browns are going to lose some games. It's just it's the tough, NFL. There's the tough way. games yeah. there. So he comes back. It's Texans, Bengals, Ravens, Saints, Commanders, Steelers. Texans oh. dub should be. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bengals. I guess we'll see again. I'm going to pick us to beat them until they beat us. Um, Ravens. We'll see what's going on there. And I th- in the Saints, Jameis, Commanders, it's Wentz, um, and then Steelers. I'm just – we'll see. Yeah. We so will. there's a lot of que- – the back half of the schedule, once Wentz comes back, there's some teams that could be really good, or but there's also some big question marks. The Saints are going to go as far as Jameis Winston takes them. Plus, mm-hmm. I mean, they got a solid defense. The Ravens, we'll see what they can do if Lamar is healthy or if any of their receivers do anything. And I know they're a run first team, but you still have to be able to throw the ball in the NFL. Yep. Uh, the commanders will see how Wentz is playing if he doesn't have three broken ankles by then. <laughs> you know, if they're trotting out Taylor Heineke and then the Steelers, what quarterback they're playing at this point in the year? You know, so um, 
six and five means Deshaun can come back and he can go uh, what four and one, four and two because there's going to be six games right. Yep. yep. So he can go four and two. So if you can somehow if you can go seven and four, then that takes a little bit of heat off us down the stretch. But right. I think anything less than six and five, you're really putting a lot of pressure mm-hmm. on the Browns down the stretch. Yeah. If 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 he comes back and we're five and six, now you got to he's got to be. Hitting on all cylinders, pretty much right from the get. Yeah, we've we've got to be over five hundred. I totally agree. Yeah, um, is it possible? Yes, with Jacoby Brissett and this team. I mean, we've said it so many times, but I mean, the run game is going to carry us there. The run game, in the, in short the passing, and the defense. Yeah, yep. the defense is. I think the defense going to be kind of nasty this year. I so, agree. I, I totally agree. We're going to get into our game review. I, there is one thing I'm a little bit nervous about the defense. We'll get into it. Um, but I think early, and I know, like John said, Jacoby Brissett is not, uh, we won't call him a franchise quarterback, but this is going to be by far the best team he's ever played on, yeah. roster-wise. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So he's never played on a team like this. And so I, I just think the run game, not turning the ball over, and the defense can carry us the first half, the part of the season. Um, so then the last thing I want to ask you about this, now that the final decision's been made, it's 11 games, we're going to see him this year. Was all this worth it? <laughs> if Deshaun was out for the whole season, I still think it's worth it. 100%. So, yeah. Oh, for for a second there, I thought you meant, was it worth it? Like, this whole mess with the NFL? Like, like no, it wasn't. No, would, you, would you make the trade again today? Oh, absolutely. We have Deshaun Watson. <laughs> absolutely, I would. Yeah. I, all these people who are screaming, dumbest trade ever. He's never going to play the... the a snap for the Browns. You guys just gave away your franchise for a guy who will never play for you. He's going to play this year. I saw the, one of my favorite comments, and I, I don't know who it was. I should look it up because I'm going to shout him out right now. They said that Deshaun Watson's never done anything in Houston, even when he had DeAndre Hopkins, I said, mm. except for leading the league and passing whenever Hopkins was gone. Yes. Yep. Uh, Deshaun Watson, I think, is only behind Aaron Rodgers or something with highest QB rating through so many games. Uh, I mean, his QB rating for his career is over 100. He's very, very good. Yeah. He's and very, very good. And very young. That's a, yes. He's younger than Baker. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. know. That's what, I, that's what I didn't understand with these people. Every All these people crying, even if, you know, he's rusty. Say he missed the whole year and he came back. You don't even know if he's going to be good. Guys, he's not 36. He's 26. He'll, he, he's not going to forget how to play football all of a sudden. Yes, could it take a game or two to get back into it? Yes, but we didn't sign him for two games. It's not a two-game t- contract. We got him for five years. Yeah, man. And, and honestly, as long as he lives up to the billing, which I'm 100% confident he's going to, we got him the rest of his career. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. We're not going to let him go. People don't let franchise quarterbacks walk out the door. So for the first time in our lives, we have a guy where we know the quarterback is a dude. Yep. There's yes. no question marks in terms of ability. Everybody knows his ability. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Are you guys a little mad he's not playing in the preseason? I so no starters at all, and we'll we'll get to it. But no starters played this this week. Yes, but he's Eagles. not a starter right now. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. But you kind of get, get what I'm saying. I, I wonder if he'll get a little bit of run against the Bears. No, they said he's not playing yeah, at all. He's he's done. He's done. Uh, here's my thing. This is my only argument for it. What if they trot him out there and he tears his ACL? <laughs> and then we go, well, again, man, that was very stupid considering we're we're playing Gardner Minshew in a preseason game in wet grass where yeah, nobody but the cares. Same thing could be said for the Chiefs with Mahomes going out there. Absolutely. And playing, no, I completely you know, agree. My, I, I just, I guess I thought like, man, I'd like to see, especially since last week didn't go the way he wanted it to, like knock off some rust and play a little bit. But at the same time, knock off the rust and he's going to sit 11 weeks. Maybe they thought he knocked off the rust and he's going to be okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess we'll the, see. I was just a I, little surprised that he was – that they weren't playing him. I thought he'd get at least like another series. Yeah, I, I was just listening to a fantasy podcast the other day and they just made a comment about – or Deshaun Watson, you know, about – because the suspension decision came out and they said, well, he looked terrible in his preseason game anyway. I thought did you, they must have just read the box score. I don't think he looked terrible. No, people – He wasn't like – he wasn't Deshaun Watson like on his game, but – I mean, the guys were dropping balls. Yeah, he threw and, five passes, and two of them were dropped, and one of them, somebody ran the wrong route. Yeah, like, he didn't <laughs> look bad. Like, he, he looks good on the field. I, 
I've been to training camp twice. Trust me, he still knows how to throw a football. <laughs> I think yeah. it'll be he's, well worth the wait. He's still yes. athletic. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm excited for week 11. Uh, and let's just hope Jacoby Brissett uh, can carry it. We're going to talk about the J- Brissett Dobbs thing, I think, a little bit in the after hours. So if you're interested in that, join the dogs.com. Hey, Browns fans, we just want to take a quick break in the action to tell you guys about DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football. Join the next generation of fantasy football with Rainmakers Football, the first ever NFT fantasy game from DraftKings. It's the only NFT fantasy game licensed by the NFLPA. Now you can play all season for millions in prizes by building the ultimate NFT franchise. Right now, everyone can get their first full roster starter pack for free. That's right, for free. Free. Playing Rainmakers is simple. Buy, sell, bid, and win player card NFTs of the biggest names in the game through regular drops and auctions on DraftKings Marketplace. Craft lineups of athletes from your NFT collection and earn points for touchdowns, receptions, and more, just like you do in daily fantasy football. Build your NFT franchise and enter free Rainmakers football contests all season long to compete for millions in prizes. So come on, Browns fans. The next generation of fantasy sports is here. Download the DraftKings Daily Fantasy app right now. Sign up with the promo code TPPN. Click the Rainmakers title and opt in to get your first card for free. Plus, play for millions in prizes all football season while building the ultimate NFT fantasy franchise with Rainmakers football. That's promo code TPPN. Build, play, win only at DraftKings. Contest entries dependent on type and number of NFTs held. Eligibility restrictions apply. Void were prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Now back to the show. Um, so the Browns did play a game this week. Uh, second preseason game. Lost 21-20 to to the Eagles. Super exciting preseason game. Yeah. Like tons of offense. Yeah. Almost no defense. Um, and I put, what, what do we like about the game? What, what, what stuck out to you guys? Uh, we got a serviceable backup quarterback. For Very sure. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he he went out and played well again, and I think you're seeing his athleticism is really help. It's it's kind of been missing, and I think Stefanski has wanted that from that position, somebody who can move a little bit. Yes, and you're seeing that out of Dobbs, 14 to 20, 141 yards um, in a rushing touchdown. He also rushed four times for 47 yards, averaged 11.8 yards, an electrifying run. Uh, where the dude tore his undershirt and he spun yeah. around, tiptoed up the <laughs> sideline, juked the last dude coming back in. Um, you're just seeing the guy play smart football. He knows where to go with the football, and he he's throwing it well. I mean, he's putting the ball where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um, he would have had another completion, but David Bell dropped one, and it would have been a big one down the sideline, put us down to about two. Yeah. And if you follow training camp, drops are not David Bell's thing. Yep. So. No, it, it would have been a tough catch. It was a tough catch and for it, sure. It, it, it's his first game. Some rookie jitters did hit him in the hand, so yep. you got to say it was a drop. But, um, but no, Josh Dobbs played really well. Another bright spot. I think you can comfortably go into the season with him as your backup. Now, there was a lot of talk. You know, can we trust this guy? Do the Browns need to make another move for somebody else? I think he's kind of put that to bed. I like what the Browns did with the quarterback situation, yeah. bringing in so they make the big move. The they trade all the picks, they give all the money to Deshaun Watson, then you bring in Jacoby Brissett as the backup who can do similar things, and then you bring in Josh Dobbs who just showed he can do similar things. So you can kind of run the same offense no yep. matter who's in there without having to tweak it. So, I mean, it's, look at the Eagles. You can't not do the same thing with Gardner Minshew, Minshew that you're going to do with Jalen Hurts. So you got to kind of tweak it a little bit depending on mm-hmm. you know if something would happen to Hurts. Yep. So I thought Dobbs was uh, impressive again. Um, I thought the run game was way better this time. I thought Dearness Johnson, I think, only got two carries, but he looked significantly better yep. in those mm-hmm. two carries than he, he did, did in the first week. Um, I mean, the, the Browns as a team rushed for 174 yards on 32 carries, uh, 5.4 yards per carry. So the run game, every running, back, every running back for the Browns looked great, and then the whole backup line played well again, mm-hmm. which, I mean, t- was technically the third center. Yeah, and we still ran the ball all over them, so that was encouraging to see. Um, I was excited about that, which is gonna again, we're gonna lean on that run game probably hard early in the season. Um, I thought David Bell played well uh, in his debut. Like we we touched on, he did have the drop, but um, he what we what do you end up with here? Uh, three, three for forty six. Yeah. Yep, average fifteen on four yards, targets, fifteen yards a catch, eleven and a half. I'm sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. My bad. Good. 
Don't question my math. I know. Or I, I should math. never question you. Yeah, uh, ESPN's <laughs> math. Um, but no, and the, the thing I noticed about David Bell is he just knows how to get open. Yeah, I mean, in those three catches, there's nobody around him. He just he knows how to find the soft spots in the zone. He's smart. He's heady. He knows when to sit, get into the quarterback's vision. Um, I just I think he's going to be really good, especially when Deshaun gets back. Yep. I, I just I think he's going to be a, kind of a steal. No. So if we're healthy at receiver the whole year, do you think there's a chance we're kind of worrying for no reason? No, because because. Um, even though I think David Bell could be really good, he's not. A, I don't think he's like a stretch the field guy. You know, he's going to be a work more in the middle of the field, kind of like a Jarvis Landry type receiver. If Amari Cooper goes down, DPJ becomes your one. That's not good. We've seen that. No, but John <laughs> said if, if the wide receiver room is healthy all year, oh, if it's will, healthy. We, will we look back and say, ah, we had nothing to worry about? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Which, of course, you have to – Take injuries into consideration. So basically, would Cooper, DPJ, Bell kind Njoku. of be a, a and Njoku be a solid receiving core if they were healthy the whole year? We'll see. I think so. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's we'll see if they stay healthy. <laughs> well, it, here's the thing: as much as we like the potential of David Bell and we like the potential of David Njoku, I'm not going to take three catches for 46 yards in a preseason game and say Browns are set at wide receiver. Oh, that's fair. I'm yeah. going to need more. I'm going to need to see more. I still think we need – I want one more veteran receiver on this I, roster. I do too, without a doubt. The problem is there just isn't one. I know. I know Will Fuller's out there, but I'm just not convinced even if even if we sign him. I wouldn't, I'm not anti-signing Will Fuller. I just don't know what you're getting out of him. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I, would you just like shelve him until week 11 too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just say, just wait till Deshaun comes back, then you can play? Yeah, I just – Don't get hurt till then? The guy hasn't played a full season in a long, long time. Yeah. Has he ever played a full season? That'd be something to look up, but I, I got you. Just give me two seconds. Keep <laughs> right. talking. Uh, we should plan these episodes more. And we have <laughs> yeah, well, facts. you know, you guys just be you know, we, freelancing. Well, we just throw names out there randomly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and for anybody who wants a little background into the show, I'd say like 35% of the time I, I type up a show outline before we come. That is too high. <laughs> <laughs> that is too high of a number. It used to be every time, and then it just, uh, you well, know. We take, we take bets every week on whether or not it's coming and so, what, what day, what time. And I, I sent one. I'll tell you what. When we started the show, you know, we were quarantined for COVID. My show outlines, it was ESP. They were pristine. Stuff. Yes. They were nice. I had stats. I had what we were going to everything. And then as – Things have gotten busier. Show outlines have gone from great to, well, it's there to, we didn't get one this week. (laughs) (laughs) And the subs keep coming in, baby. (laughs) So then we get here and we're like, okay, uh, let's talk about this today real quick. So we're just, if we ever, you know, start taking this serious, we could be, you know, do big things. We could be very organized. (laughs) I have some uh, statistics here for Will Fuller. All right, let's see. The most games he has played in a season is 14. Okay. That was his... Yes. Okay. Uh, and that was his rookie year. Uh, we have 10 in 2017, 7 in 2018, 11 in 2019, 11 in 2020, and then 2 in 2021. So, I mean, the 11 seasons, I mean, that was back when there were 16 game schedule. So he's missing five games. I would, I would sign him and say, you're going to sit. Don't you play your old team. He might. <laughs> so I heard rumors that he was kind of waiting to see what happens with Deshaun Watson and everything. So Maybe gonna, he kind of just hangs out for 10 games and then, you know, some things start happening. And because I, I don't think the market for Will Fuller is like so, super hot right now. So Deshaun can start practicing week nine. We sign Will, uh, Will Fuller week nine, week eight, just to get him in the building. <laughs> yeah, get him in the building. This get is his the jersey front door. This up. is how you get <laughs> yeah. here. Yep. And then week nine, <laughs> he's ready to hit the practice field with Deshaun. I like it. Um, yeah, we'll see. It's just. We're de- we're ju- we're just so thin, and I know like it, the question was if we stay healthy, but man, that's a huge if. Yeah, that's a huge if. Yep. I mean, David Bell's already been hurt once in, in training camp. You know, just looking down the the list here in the box score of these receivers, I mean, we are really banking on some guys who we don't want to be banking on. I mean, Jamarcus Bradley, we saw him in limited action last year. Yep. Played okay, but he's not yeah. a guy you want to lean on. You know, no, a couple yeah, catches yeah. here and there. Mike Harley, your boy Justin. Who, see flashes. You, see, you, you flashes. see the flashes, but do not want to rely on this Correct. guy. Um, Nakia Griffin Stewart, we can rely on him. I think, right? Uh, <laughs> That's the one guy. 
<laughs> no, I, I don't I, think so. I honestly don't even know who that is. He had three catches. Yeah. Um, no, I, I completely agree. And the problem is this team has playoff and beyond aspirations. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. I To me, you need to add one more piece, kind of a security blanket. Um, but we'll, we'll see what the Browns do because I, I'll tell you what, who you're not getting anything out of is Anthony Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice segue there. Yeah, we we'll, we'll get to him. One last positive from the game I wanted to touch on um, was Cade York. Mm-hmm. I know he had the one miss, but – he banged a 50 yarder for uh, in first energy stadium. And it would have been good from 60 sneak preview. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some, a little insight uh, when we do game ball stuff, no spoilers here on who I might lean towards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, the miss was one of those things where he's just got to learn the stadium, the swirling wind, yeah. um, that kind of thing. But it's just good to see a Browns kicker with a leg. We yeah. haven't really had one since Phil Dawson. I no. I've got this is the first time I feel confident we sent him out there. He's going to make the kick. Mm-hmm. Maybe he hasn't earned that yet, but for some reason I got the confidence. Well, in it was it. even like the the fifty yarder. It was like sitting there watching, like, ah, he's going to make this. Yeah, he just steps up, boots it through. It's like yeah. sweet. That is a sweet feeling right there. Fifty. I mean, fifty yards. That that is nice. Um, and he, he clears it. He's three fourths away at the goalpost. His yeah. miss was fifty four yards, right? A fifty five. Fifty five. Yeah, and it hurts, but I'm with you. I like he looks good, and I'm not too worried about that because he's still learning the the stadium. And yeah, at least it wasn't like a thirty seven yarder he missed. At least something. it wasn't short. No, he hit it. He, no, he, he hit, hit it well. In middle of the middle of the post. I mean, it, it was better clear by a mile. So that that's positive in. Um, Obviously, the Browns have a lot of faith in him because there's not even another kicker on the roster. Which right. I love. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's exciting for the Browns. Hopefully, we finally have a Phil Dawson replacement. Now, we'll segue into what we didn't necessarily love about the game. Well, can I just throw one more thing about what I did like? Go ahead. I did like the play of our young secondary backup depth, depth pieces. Mm-hmm. I know that Philly ripped off some big runs and they had some big plays and things, but... This is the kind of game where you got all these backups playing in there, and it's like, let's just look at the individual guys play. I want to see how they how they read the plays, how they're hitting people, are they tackling, are they wrapping up. And I just thought guys like Richard LeCount, our boy DeAnthony Bell, Tony Fields popped off the screen, which was yep. nice to see because last year was injury riddled, and we weren't really sure what we got out of him. And He's fast, man. He is. So I think he's a good JOK backup. Mm-hmm. I that think that's or, what he was drafted to be. Uh, or an Anthony Walker replacement yeah because Which we need he can play that middle and he can go sideline to sideline he's yeah. faster than walker uh yeah, for sure another thing i know it it didn't work out the way we wanted it but miller literally had green grass on that uh it was like a little little five yard throw and he just dropped it i mean it would have been a pick six and he would have taken it to the house so it's unfortunate he didn't uh pick it off but you got to like the read. You got to like the anticipation, mm-hmm. how he just jumped on it. Um, I thought he had a great game, too. A.J. I, Green. I'm yeah, just, he, he had a couple really nice plays. Players, it's like, okay, so if we have a starter go down, or he's got to miss a game if you're or two. confident that the backup can come in and yeah. give you good reps. Yeah, because now now our, our corners are, you know, it's like Denzel, and then you've got Newsom, Greedy, Emerson, yeah. Green. It's like, okay, cool. I feel good about that depth. Yep. Uh, I thought Alex Wright played a much better second game yep. than he did mm-hmm. first game, especially against the run. Hey, Browns fans, you've heard us talking about Omaha Steaks for a while now, and they are seriously the best steaks that we have ever had. Summer is here, and no backyard grill out is complete without Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter dogs, D A W G S, into the search bar. You're going to get a special price on the All American assortment. And as a tasty bonus, you've been hearing us talk about the eight free, ultra juicy Omaha steak burgers that you get when you place your order. Well, now they're changing the deal, and you now get 12 of those babies. So you get 12 free Omaha steak burgers with your order when you go to omahasteaks.com, enter dogs into the search bar. Order the All-American Assortment. You get 16 mouth-watering entrees, four famously fork-tender, double-trim, butcher's cut filet mignons, four pork chops, four boneless chicken breasts. Is anybody else here getting hungry? Plus, so much more. There's a reason why Omaha Steaks has been the leader of gourmet steaks since 1917. No one, and I mean no one, comes close to matching the flavor, tenderness, and the value of Omaha Steaks. So go now, order the All-American Assortment, 
Fill your freezer with enough gourmet food to keep your cookouts going strong all summer long. And don't forget, for a limited time, our listeners get 12 free Omaha Steak Burgers when they order the All-American Assortment. So hurry up, visit omahasteaks.com, type in keyword dogs, D-A-W-G-S, into the search bar. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword dogs. So, like I said, what we didn't like, Anthony Schwartz, I think, is very (laughs) fringe to make this team. (laughs) He's awful, man. I'm not trying to pick on the guy. Like, it's not like he's the one I'm picking on this year, you know, like, but that I think it was third, fourth play of the game. We run an end around to him, and uh, it's blocked perfectly. I mean, if, if you pause it once, if you're watching the game, and once he gets the jet or the end around, and you pause it and you see the blocking, you're like, this is, this is a touchdown. This is 50 yards. And then you press play, and he hits four. <laughs> because he he doesn't know how to read a block, he he can't break an arm tackle from a DB who's being blocked. I mean, he just a Texans just said he just doesn't look like a football player to me. He he is a guy who's really fast who tried football and he was like a gadget guy, whatever in college, and it worked. But he just to me looks like he needs to go try for out for the Olympics because it's not it's not translating whatever sport involves no contact would be great for him yes or any he's like i said he it's like he has no vision yeah there's no wiggle to him he just is fast <laughs> he's got he's got no wiggle straight line speed yep and it just he just doesn't look like a football player to me at all no he doesn't it, it, that's that's disappointing because it, it's just one of those things that's hard to explain but when you watch certain guys on the field you're like that guy's a player like he just looks like it he acts like it he he walks, he runs, he moves like it. Anthony Schwartz has none of that. No, and many had another drop. Yeah. And I know they came right back to him and he had a nice catch, but like I'm not gonna applaud you for your one nice catch. That's what you're getting paid. You're to a do. receiver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it shouldn't be like, oh well, he caught that one. <laughs> you know, right. we we shouldn't be surprised when he catches the ball. And he just like I said, I we're thin at receiver, so probably makes this team but if a guy like mike harley continues to flash in camp and i mean i don't think it's safe i don't think it's a sure thing that he's he's going to be here i think somebody else will pick him up because of its speed but then he can be somebody else's problem yeah really yep so um that that was disappointing in it's i know he was my bust pick but man i was really hoping i was wrong I yeah, was, you don't pick bust and, and hope you're right about oh no, i know and i was excited when we drafted him because i was like man this guy is so fast. This is kind of what the Browns need. They need a burner. I, I saw, I was like, maybe he's, we can kind of turn him into a Tyree kill. Man, no way. <laughs> no way. Um, another thing that I thought was a problem, and to me this is something that makes me very nervous about the season. I know there were no starters playing, but the run defense, we're banking on the defense in our run game to carry us these first 11 games. We can't let teams just come out and run it right down our throats for a whole game. Time of possession us to death and keep us off the field and just run for 180 yards against us every game. They just gashed us. It was bad. It was bad. The interior line, Perry on Winfrey played terrible. Yep. Yeah. He, 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 he was bad. We love the guy here on the show. We love his intensity. But uh, he almost seems he's more of a project than – we maybe we thought all these people yeah. were projecting him to be a high pick and we couldn't believe he fell. Well, maybe there's a reason. Yep. And that's what I was reading recently that the expectations for him are kind of like, wait till about mid season to see if he starts to click because it's going to be a rough start. And we're seeing that. Yeah. He's not great against the run and they threw the ball. And I didn't see him anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so he, he's got a lot of work to do. And I know we didn't play any starters, but like the guy was out there, Perry, guys that were ex- expecting to be able to at least come in and give blows and play meaningful minutes. And they ran, I mean, Kenneth Gainwell ran all over us. Uh, what was the other running back? Austin Scott. Scott. Yeah, ran all over us. And it's just, we can't, that's what the Patriots did to us with Ramon, with Stevenson. Yeah. We can't afford that early in the year. We can't let teams just come out and just, if we can't get off the field, and they're just porking us down the middle the whole time, and we have the ball 10 minutes, and they have it for 30, we're screwed. It's fair. So <sighs> that, to me, is something that needs short up, especially because I think the expectations for this defense are sky high. I think we're expecting this to be a top-five defense. That's how they ended the season. Run defense is almost like almost like wide receiver for us, where it's like 
if we stay healthy, our starter talent's probably good enough. But we don't have much depth, it looks like. Well, the problem is the start. Who's your interior starters? Probably Elliot and uh, what, uh, Brian, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. But I, I think we are forgetting it, it, too. We're like how, counting on Elliot to do that. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, and he's never done it before. I had a guy text me during the game, and he's like, "Man, he's like Browns are looking rough. Can't get any penetration." And I just texted him back and said, "You know that we have literally like third string guys out there right now. Some of these like, guys will so, not make the team. They won't make the team. Like I expect the defense to look a lot different when you have Clowney and Garrett on the outside, and then we didn't even see our starting interior guys in there. So I know it's preseason." Um, and you don't want to overreact. I I know what you're saying. It's a glaring. And we saw it the last couple of years. I remember the Jacksonville game. James Robinson gashed us up and down the field. And it wasn't even like anything flashy. He would literally just run it straight up the middle for six yards every play. And we couldn't get off the field. Um, so I, that's a concern for sure. Yeah. And, I, and I, like I said, I get that our starters didn't play. But the guys who are penciled in as starters right now are unproven. Jordan Elliott, to this point in his career, has done absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yep. And all of a sudden, he's a starter. Well, we'll be fine because Jordan Elliott will be in there. We don't freaking know. No, that's fair. We don't know if we're going to be fine or not. And, and we have all these great pieces on defense, these nice fancy corners, these great edge rushers. But at the end of the day, if, I, if they can line up and just shove it down our throats, they'll do it all freaking game. And what, there, if there's, we don't exactly have a run-stopping linebacker core. Our linebacking core is built to go sideline to side, sideline and play in space. So if you're weak, it, the interior D line and the linebackers right behind them aren't exactly run stuffing linebackers. That makes me nervous. That that I'm nervous about that this year. I just, especially. I mean, let's go look at the schedule here real quick. Week one, Christian McCaffrey, pretty he, decent running back. Yeah. yeah. Week two, uh, Michael Carter and Brees Hall probably. Yeah. Yep. Uh, week three, Najee Harris. Yeah. yeah. Week four, so you maybe you get a little bit of a break. Week five, Austin Eckler. Mm-hmm. Uh, week six, uh, Stevenson. And, Har- no, and we, Harris. Yeah, in Harris. That's the Patriots. Uh, and then week six, Lamar Jackson. Uh, J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. If uh, Gus Edwards is back by Gus Ed- Yeah. Um, the Bengals. Joe Mixon. That, I mean, there's some teams that can run the freaking ball early in our schedule. So if these guys don't got it figured out, this six and five could be way more of an uphill battle. To me, that interior, they got to figure that out. And I'm just not 100% convinced right now Jordan Elliott and this other guy are it. So Fair. that makes me nervous. It, makes it is me a very, concern. And, is. and another thing that makes me nervous is this defense, to me, was built to play with a lead. They're all fast. They can, all, they can get after the quarterback. Well, we might not be playing from the lead as much as what we thought in these first 11 games. So there's going to be some adjustments there. Some some big time adjustments, and hopefully it doesn't take six weeks to figure it out. Because if it does, the season could be done by then. We weren't scoring a lot of points last year either, and our defense was still doing okay. Not in the first half of the year. No, no, no. But the way it ended, <laughs> yes, the way they came on and gelled. You know, that second half of the year when they were top five was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. We still lost a lot of games because we couldn't outscore sixteen points. But <laughs> whatever. Yep. So that was that was the thing that made me the most nervous. I, I'm still obviously high on the defense, but that. That's something I'm watching for come regular season, and if starters do play against the Bears this coming week, that's something I'm watching for. Um, anything else you guys saw out of that game that you, makes you concerned? I just was. I, it's not concerned. I was just going to note that penalties went down. Yeah, this week. Yep. And, and which I thought was really a good sign, considering these are all backup guys. They don't get a lot of run at you know camp and practice and things like that. So to come out on a field in a full game situation, they only had six penalties the whole yep. game. Didn't give up any sacks. Very cool. Yeah. So. I had one thing that I wanted to touch on as far as I don't want to say it was even disappointing, but I think it's very clear Josh Rosen probably isn't a guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I think he looked very inaccurate, and I know that I, I saw some stuff where it was like some of the guys were running the wrong routes, you know. Still, I thought that the decision-making wasn't that great. I thought there was a couple plays where he just didn't make the right read. So for me, like for Dobbs to have that kind of game and then for Rosen to come in uh, and play like that, I think it's a kind of a clear – that was – I think there, there was a little bit of a battle, if, whether it was or wasn't, but that I think that's I think the battle is over. The battle is over, yeah. I, I will say this in his defense, like you said, he's playing with gro- grocery baggers 
that late in the game. Mm-hmm. And so he's he's not exactly getting to play with the cream of the crop. Now you can make the argument neither is he. Yeah, for Dobbs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and you can so. Um, but that's an uphill battle. But I agree, Dobbs is clearly outshined him in the yeah. preseason. It's not even close. No. Um, so then we'll move on. We got one more preseason game. There's only three now. Uh, it's going to be kind of like the dress rehearsal. I'm pretty sure Jacoby Brissett slotted to play. I'd imagine most of the starters will play at least a series or two. Um, so what are you guys looking for? I, I would love to see just a couple nice passes to Amari Cooper. So I just want to see him on the field in Browns jersey, catch a ball, and just show that he's still, you know, Amari Cooper that we we all know. I, I want to see the I want to see the starting offense play with Brissett. Yeah, and I want to mm-hmm. see him lead, lead a drive down the field. I want to see points, um, just kind of make us feel more comfortable for that week one matchup. Do you want to see Nick Chubb? No. <laughs> okay, because I'm on the I no do. side of that too. I do not in this game though. I do. I would love to for Nick Chubb to get out there, but to me, I like see, it's another one. That, it's kind of pointless. I think this me. is a, another Johnson for Kelly yeah. game. It's yeah. fine. I mean, I mean Kelly looked yeah. great. I don't. Th- I think our run game's solidified enough that we don't need to put Chubb and Hunt in any risk yeah. in this game. Yep, I agree. They know what they're doing. But I'd like to see the starting offensive line. Yeah, I, I want to see that with Jacoby Brissett, and I'd like to see Amari Cooper, David Njoku, David Bell, and DPJ, and I'd like to see them get a couple series and see what we're going to get. See yes. what the offense is going to look like. Yep. Hopefully, nobody gets hurt. <laughs> but I think I think you can't be I think you can't play scared. At some point, you got to be willing. You got to prepare. I don't think you can just be so scared of an injury that you go into a season, yeah, not one hundred percent sure. Especially with how important, like we just harped on the importance of the first part of this schedule, making you, sure we execute and winning those winnable games. We got to be ready to go. You can't lose before Deshaun comes back, or in actually just for this season because of this. You can't lose any games that you're supposed to win. If it's a game you're supposed to win, it's got to be a W. If not, you're, every time you it, lose that game, the playoffs get further and further away. Yeah, like last year, like the Chargers game always comes back to mind where we just should have won that game. We had it. Yep. We had it won, and we blew it. We yep. cannot blow games like Chiefs. that. Chiefs. Chiefs, yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? You got to win the games you're supposed to. I think I saw that the Browns in um, are favored in five of the games without Watson. Even without Watson, they're still favored in five of them. I'd okay. have to go back and see what they are. So then, first four, <laughs> yeah, the first <laughs> yeah, four, right. and then one other one. Um, so then they just got to steal one, then win one game against these teams that you're not that you're not favored in. So I want to see a good dress rehearsal, and I, I'd love to see the starting defense. Does Clowney play? Because to me, he seems a little bit more glass like. So I don't know if I want him to play or not. I like. I'm okay with them not playing. I don't think I like to me. I don't think Miles is going to be out there. I I don't know if they've announced who all is going to play as far as the defense. Uh-huh. You're, I think you're going to see like the young guys. I think you're going to see Delpit, and you're going to see Emerson. I don't know if you're going to see Ward. I don't know probably if Ward's not. probably going to go out there. But I wouldn't. If Newsom's healthy, I think he's out there. Like you know, I think that there's going to be some of the younger guys out there. But like, why risk it? To me, I think defensively, especially we're returning a lot of the same guys. They they've already they've gelled. They gelled all yep. last year, and you don't need to be – it's not as clockwork on defense. You know, it's kind of – you know, at the end of the day, it's find the ball, tackle the ball. I think on offense, it's more precision, more timing, uh, more being in sync. So I think for the starters to get a couple series, it's more important on offense than it is on defense. Um, So, by the way, somebody called this out in the uh, the YouTube comments and said, I only ever look over here. <laughs> I and saw that. It, I've been thinking about that this show. I keep like it made, it made me laugh. Me, it made me laugh me. super hard because <laughs> I have actually I I be sitting here and I'm like, man, I've just been looking over there. But I think it's just the angle. Well, if you sit and turn to look at Justin, then you got to be real careful where you put your you mouth might, to the mic. Yeah, you might yeah. break your neck. You and, know? and then I'm just like, so I just I, I need to practice. <laughs> the working. swivel. It's a yes. lot of movement too. I, mean. I know. Uh, so <laughs> if you guys think I'm just staring at Josh. He I is. am. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. <laughs> it, it's something I'm working on. I'm very self conscious about it. Um, but no, that's what I want to see out of the Bears and and, uh, and get out with no injuries. I think we were fortunate enough to get out of the second game with no significant injuries, or re- I don't even remember really any injuries at all. So knock on wood, no major injuries uh, in the third game against the Bears. And then it's freaking regular season football. Yep. <laughs> I what can't sucks re- is that 
bye week in the preseason. Yeah, I just call that oh, fantasy that. football draft weekend. Yeah, that's that's what it's become. <laughs> yep. That is what that is. I'm very you know you don't have to worry about anybody getting injured in a preseason Correct. game. <laughs> You're up to date yep. completely. You're Everything's right. looking lined up. You're getting some death charts that are pretty accurate. Fantasy football weekend. Yep. And we'll have uh, – there's college football. Yes. So the week yes. that there's no NFL, we got Buckeyes and Notre Dame. There's college Notre football Dame this Buckeyes. weekend. I didn't know. I thought that it was still another week out. That now, like, it's like North Carolina against – somebody but i'm like is that football it sounds like football <laughs> i'm down I'm, I'm excited for that buckeyes game Ooh, yeah it's gonna be fun we're gonna beat the brakes off i think they're dog walking yeah, them i think so too <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be i i just have no respect for notre dame as a program <laughs> <laughs> because i mean every time that the supposedly that the media is telling me that notre dame's good they go into that game and just get dog walked yep so yep, maybe yep. this will come back to bite me i hope not but man I just see us just dog walking them, just not even gonna be. I close. mean, the way we ended the season in that bowl game, like Jackson on. Smith and Jigba, CJ Stroud, and the, our running back, like just it's exciting. <laughs> I heard the it's defense gonna be is looking very, very. Oh, uh, that's too. that's the biggest thing is the defense need to get better, need to get tougher. We brought yes. in a new defensive coordinator, so hopefully that helps. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on, John? You got anything you want to get in? I uh, don't think so. Okay, cool beans. Yeah. Just a heads up, it's a Saturday night game, so <laughs> yeah. don't wake up Sunday all excited to tailgate for Brown's uh, preseason game. Shout out to Fred from work. He saw me. We don't know each other well. He's like, hey. <laughs> Shout I out think to Fred I, from work. <laughs> I think I saw your twin on a Brown show the other day, and I was like, was it the Dog's Podcast? He's like, yeah, and I was like, no, that wasn't my twin. I'm actually that stupid in real life. <laughs> oh, boy. Join the Patreon, Fred. <laughs> you should have said, oh, yeah, that's Jeff. That is my twin brother. <laughs> He's an idiot. <laughs> Uh, that's my evil twin. Yeah. Um, well, Hey, thank you guys for checking out another episode of the dogs. The regular season's quickly approaching. We couldn't be more pumped to enjoy it with all of you. Uh, to all the dog pack members, we'll see you guys on the after hour show. We've got a ton of good stuff to get into on that one. I'm excited for it today. Uh, and to everybody else, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of the dogs podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at the dogs podcast and become an official dog pack member and join the dogs.com. Yeah.